We are watching people who are completely devoid and vacant inside go out and do the unspeakable and the literal unthinkable because it's not even occurring to these people that they're out in reality in real life taking people's real lives it's just like points on a board hey yo hey yo hey yo welcome to my channel hey yo hey yo listen up there's enough hey yo hey yo hey yo the wireless woman hey yo hey yo hey yo I am your girl, Debbie and the Key, the original wireless woman, welcoming you back to our spot, room 303. If you are new, welcome to my crew, but my returnees, you know what we do. If you like this video, well then, like this video. Let the comments reveal how you really feel. And if you're feeling a vibe, we'll go ahead on and subscribe. But before you blink, share this link. Welcome Wi-Fi's. It's a little bit of a somber introduction today because we're going to be talking about some heavy, heavy issues. This is another Cult of Personality episode. of the wireless woman and we will be talking about the controller whether that be the remote control whether that be the video game controllers or the controllers in your life it would appear that we are moving more and more towards the society of automatons who are giving very automated replies to stimulus that is coming at us and it's time for us to turn off what controls us but before we get into today's content you already know what time it is what are we gonna do tomorrow night the same thing we do every night pinky try to take over the world it is time to call the roll and i need everyone who's ready to unplug from the matrix to the front of the class it's time to read aloud All right, so welcome Wi-Fi to the controller episode of The Wireless Woman, where we will be talking not specifically about narcissistic personality disorder, but mental health issues that are continuing to manifest themselves in very destructive ways. Do me a favor on your way in and go ahead and like this video. You know, when you like the video, will I? Love it. In recent weeks, there have been several mass shootings. Unfortunately, with us coming out of a pandemic and really getting back to the world being open, I fear that we will see these types of incidents continue to increase like they were in the years proceeding up to the pandemic. It kind of feels like the pandemic gave us a little bit of a reprieve of a whole lot of violence and violent crime. And I remember sitting during the pandemic and feeling like a lot of people were making almost like New Year's resolutions and amends. And they were talking about how much their life was going to be different just as soon as they could get back out in the free world. You know, people who had lived very selfish, self-centered lives being quarantined in their homes alone started to come to this realization. They're like, hey, I don't want to spend my life alone. I don't want to do life by myself. I want to do life with significant people. I want to reestablish relationships with my children, with my family members and as soon as they open this back up, people just went right back to the same selfish, self-centered ways. And unfortunately, the pandemic gave a lot of people the opportunity to let go of devices. I saw people hiking and going outside and we got a lot of rest and we could take middle of the day naps, you know, for those people that got put out of work for those people that worked all the way straight through. Sucks to be you. 
But for the people like me who got to spend many, many weeks at home while their job was kind of figuring out what they wanted to do, it was a really good time to meditate, to connect with self-care, to be quiet, present, and still, to pray, to learn a new hobby or skill. It was just a really great time to kind of go inside. And that's what I did during that time. And that's how the wireless woman was born because I really spent so much time by myself and on my own with my kids to realize that I could seize a very golden moment of rest and reprieve in my life. But I think there was other people that were slipping into strongholds, you know, that were spending a whole lot more time on TV, video games, on social media, YouTube. And we have to start to think about the impact that trauma, PTSD, isolation, unaddressed mental health issues, how all of those different aspects potentially became aggravated during the pandemic. The mass shooter in Buffalo went live on Twitch to live stream his killing spree, almost like it was a video game, like a real time video game. And a lot of these video games now are very realistic. You know, and we have to remember that the mind is programmed in such a way where often the mind doesn't know the difference between really reacting to stimulus in real life versus on TV. And that's the reason why we love entertainment, you know, whether it's a movie or a video game or a TV show, your mind, your adrenaline, your body, it all reacts to that stimulus the same as if it was happening to you in real life. Some of the very triggering and traumatizing things that people are watching on video games, it stays with them, just like PTSD in trauma patients that have seen the unthinkable and war. And we don't think about how these things are affecting now what has become a whole generation of children that have grown up forming their personalities with video games and media and a digital technological world. You know, some of these kids have never known life without being plugged into some type of stimulating, adrenaline rushing entertainment. And it begins to beg the question, are we in control or are we being controlled? You know, I am one of the oldest millennials, and I'm meeting a lot of people in my generation that are addicted to social media, you know, and it doesn't matter how it's coming across, their phone is in their hand all day, FaceTiming, social media apps, video games, TV shows, YouTube, it is endless, you know, to even ask them to go out, hey, let's do something, let's go somewhere, let's read a book, let's join a book club. It's like, why would I do that when I could just watch the movie? You know, and I don't think people are understanding how much they're being led to certain conclusions by the programming that they're receiving. You know, I talk in other videos a lot about how GPS is causing the part of your brain that you use for deductive reasoning to shrink. And as you're being led around by this app, it's telling you, turn this way. You know, you're not even aware of your surroundings. And a lot of times the same thing happens with video games. And this has become so detrimental because now we are watching people who are completely devoid and vacant inside go out and do the unspeakable and the literal unthinkable because it's not even occurring to these people that they're out in reality in real life taking people's real lives it's just like points on a board like scoring for a video game and i'm not dismissing what has happened i'm not sympathizing with these mass shooters this was the conversation in the 90s after Columbine, when people started to talk about like, are these video games causing violence? At the end of the day, people with guns cause violence. 
you know, as long as we are putting weapons in the hands of people, this will always be an issue, whether it's mental health or not. But I do believe that people are being programmed like bombs to be set off at designated times to be triggered. And I don't think everyone has the autonomy that they believe they do. I don't think everyone is exercising as much control over their free will as they think they are. We have to begin to unplug from these machines. We have to stop listening to what we're being told and begin to have our own internal voice that's being led by knowledge and wisdom. We have to surround ourselves with independent, free thinking people. We have to realize that we're being sold. You know, we're being sold a lot of lies and we are being programmed. I say it, I say it again. You've been had. You've been took. You've been hoodwinked. Bamboozled. Let us stray. Run them up. This is people who are on autopilot that are not thinking for themselves are in a highly suggestive state. And I talk about it when it comes to people who have mental health conditions. It's like trying to wake a sleepwalker, making them aware of the reality that they're creating because they don't see it. They're in a fantasy of believing that it's okay that I did this because this was the situation. This was what happened. They have their own internal think tank compass that's telling them this is due north, even though they're headed west or south. And as much as we believe that everybody's going to go the right way and choose the good and moral things to do, these people are being emptied out like a bank account of their morality by this media, by the way this system is programming people to turn them against each other. We see it in little ways. We see it with the gender war. We see it with, with all of these different things. And it's been that way. It's been the war on drugs. It's been this. It's been that. It's been red. It's been blue. And we really have to begin to think to ourselves, if all this ideology we have about feeling like we're right without submitting what we think to any outside criticism, you know, we're starting to align behind groups of people that agree with us and it's building on white supremacy. It's building on the patriarchy and misogyny. It's building on evil hatred and people are getting filled up with it because they're surrounded by the echo chamber that's telling them how you feel is justified. You know, it's starting to get really, really scary the, the links that certain people will go to to justify the unthinkable, the unspeakable, you know, the way that people talk to other people like they are not the reflection of God, like they don't have any soul within them because it's a projection of how empty and devoid they are inside. And I'm really watching it where, you know, men who are bitter behind experiences they had as young children in some instances are weaponizing that vitriol against women and some of the same people within their own culture that they may one day need to build with. You know, this is happening on the microcosm and on the macrocosm of society. And if we don't get back to a space where we know how to talk to each other, where we have the basic human decency of knowing that the person next to us is made out of flesh and blood also, if we don't get unplugged, learn how through therapy and counseling to be unbothered, stop projecting our issues onto other people in order to be able to unleash the love and the kindness and the courage that's needed in this time to be able to actually help your fellow man, to be able to actually survive undefiled in this evil system. The Bible talks about how there were people who had not died, but they had fallen asleep.
And when you read it, you think to yourself like, oh, they went to heaven. No, I believe it's talking about this completely sleep culture. This, like we talk about woke culture and it's become something that's like real ridiculous at this point, but there are people who are still conscientiously trying to deal with reality. And then you got people taking selfies on Instagram, you know, posting their food pics like they're living their best life when they only have two cents in the bank. Just creating this alternate reality to live in. And we're having to contend with those people who have fallen asleep. There were virgins that fell asleep waiting on Jesus and they hadn't filled their lamps with oil. This is a real problem. Even those people who are meditating and practicing mindfulness, you have to be dealing in reality. We are not going to escape this life alive. Tennessee Williams said we all live in a house on fire, but that's no reason not to get a bucket and some water. All right. If you are with me and you are ready to unplug from this matrix, you are willing to take a day a week, an hour a day, and put down your device. Cultivate some realness. Get outside, take your shoes off and do some grounding. Walk around in the sunlight. Write a letter. Do something that's not connected to your phone every day and every week. If you're ready to do that with me, to, to make that wireless challenge a reality, go ahead and drop that fire headphones emoji in the comments. I look forward to engaging with you all in the comments. My heart, my, my soul, my healing vibrations, my divine femininity goes out to people who have lost so many people. So many people to senseless mindless violence. I'm praying, wishing and hoping peace for every tortured soul who within themselves are crying out for help. Reach out and tell people that you are not okay. If you don't feel comfortable getting a therapist, at least find one person around you that you trust and tell them the truth. And for the people who are sitting around people that are drowning and you see it and you turn a blind eye to it, you are asleep. You are culpable and complicit in the harm of other people when you turn an eye. Well, it's not my business. Well, you know, it's not. We have to become conscientious enough to know that sometimes the life we save might be our own. But until the next episode, class is now dismissed. All right. Thank you so much for sticking around with me until the very end of this episode. You know, America needs to wake up. We are a part of the collective consciousness of God. And we see the reflection of God in the earth when we are willing to think conscientiously together about the greatest, greater good of all humankind. When the greatest of these takes regard for the least of these, then we see the spirit of God washing over the land and healing the people. Then we see goodness and righteousness rise and we see the dissolution of evil. But we're not seeing that right now. And it is because we have so many people who are sucked down into the matrix of their own entertainment. You know, the time is now. The place is here. The person is you to make that change. And I hope that you will align yourself with me that we can raise the conscientious vibration higher by working together to just be awake, to be present. 
If you liked this episode, then you might want to check out this episode right here. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to my channel by clicking this link here. Until the next episode, unplug, be unbothered, and unleashed.